And welcome again to the Study Bible Bible Study, where we study the Bible with Study Bibles. And Revelation 17, 14 tells us, And ye shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them, for he is Lord of Lords, he is King of Kings, and they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. God bless and amen. And this is our Second Peter 1, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4 study. And whereby are given, and whereby unto us are, and whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kind kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Jesus Christ, to whom the Bible is written about, and written for, and written because of. So if you don't believe that Jesus is who he says he is, I mean, I don't know, maybe you should find another book. Not to be rude, just to be honest about the subject. A lot of people don't believe who Jesus Christ is, but they sure spend a lot of time quoting him and pretending they have authority when they actually do so. Interesting. Interesting line of thought. Now, the Bible is reticent about all the stories of the gods, and here it alludes to such a story only to show that the mixing of heaven and earth, which had been forbidden to the first man and woman in the garden by the prohibition against eating of the tree of knowledge of good and bad, and the tree of, and the tree of life is taboo. Such heavenly and earthly unions cause God to limit the further age of human beings because he is flesh 120 years is in comparison with the great ages of his list of ancestors. Now, in chapter 5, this is a severe limit upon humans compared to the ages of the ancestors in chapter 5. Now this verse seems overloaded and confused. The divine beings went into the daughters of men and bore sons to them, perhaps continues directly. Now about the Nephilim, it continues directly in the, in the following verses. Now about the Nephilim seems to be an ancient variant of, variant of the mighty men of old. At the end of the Nephilim, the fallen ones from heaven, the Nephilim. Now these are a race of these are the race of giants mentioned in Numbers 13:33, as the giant pre-conquest inhabitants of Cana. Now they are the children of unholy unions. The ancient inhabitants of Cana were frequently referred to as giants variously throughout the Bible. Now here are the fabled inhabitants of now here are the fable inhabitants the are devalued as the offspring of arrogant unions. Now God judges the human community in the comparable ac epic. Atrasis, the gods are divided on whether to destroy humanity by plague and flood in monotheistic Israel, the fateful decision is made by Yahweh, the great God, Yah, who is also the Creator. The conflict between saving and destroying is played out within one God, Yahweh. Some of the divine anguish is caught up in regret, and the Lord is looking on Noah with favor. Now this section looks back towards the incessant sin of the race, and forward to the new beginnings in Noah, of Noah after the flood. Now it sums up the first and prepares for the flood, which is at once destruction and a new beginning. Now God saw the beauty of the world he made, seven times pronouncing it good. Now he looks on human wickedness and regrets that he made the world, every plan devised by his mind. Now idiomatic English 
for the dense Hebrew phrase, every plan devised by his mind, I will wipe out. A severe way of describing what God is about to do in, in other chapters. This is also used for the obliterating of an entire tribe. I will wipe out. This is also used in other verses as the obliteration of an entire tribe from Israel. Now, in the rest of the verse, there are details, and the details beautifully wrought creation that God is about to destroy. Now, like Enoch, who stood out from others, Noah stands out admit the, amid the wicked race. The sober reflection of judgments the somber reflection and judgment end on a note of hope. There is hope. Now the flood and the renewed blessing. Now the third instant of the, the Toledot formula here introduces the longest of five segments of primeval history. This segment tells of a great flood wiping out all flesh except for the righteous Noah and his family and the animals with him in the ark. The story, it now, the story as it now stands is coherent, but has drawn away on a variety of traditions. Now there is a priestly source and a Jehovah source. The materials of these two sources can easily be identified. According to the first source, the two pairs of every animal came into the ark, whereas Noah takes seven pairs of clean animals and two pairs of unclean animals. I'm guessing the unclean animals probably multiply a little bit faster than the clean ones, huh? Who knows? But as for the first source, the waters above and below the earth, confined there in the beginning, burst upon the earth. Whereas in the second source, the flood waters were the rains lasting 40 days and nights. Now the first supplemental traditional, the first supplemented traditional material with the narratives of his own usually allows the first source and it allows the second source and it allows the third source to stand on their own despite the visibility of old traditions the redactor has composed an artistic unity now the old testament is is written is derived from three different sources and that's what they're talking about so like three almost three different authors now most scholars do not I'm guessing too that if I remember correctly the three different offers represent three different uh, types of priests and the way they worshiped I believe I'm sure that information will be in here somewhere up ahead now most scholars do not include Noah's drunkenness. A better title is the character of Noah's sons. Now in the flood account, preferring to include it with the settling of the three sons' descendants in chapter 10, it seems best, however, to place it with the present narrative, both because of its falling under various sources and because it limes the characters of the three sons of Noah. Now the flood. Traditions of a widespread flood are found among many people over all the world. Some of these traditions echo the biblical flood, but many do not. Now the biblical account is within the ancient Near East tradition and is especially attested in Mesopotamian literature. The theme that God destroys humankind does not seem to belong to the main body of the Sumerian traditions. The preface added to the Sumerian kings list contains the phrase, after the flood had swept over the earth. The phrase or the variant occurs in the hymn of the Ishmael Dagon, the Ishmi, in the hymn of Ishmi Dagon. Now in another text of the same period, the exit bottom third of the Sumerian tablet, probably near in the date to the text just mentioned, tells the creation of five cities, singling out the Sudra, the Sumerian equivalent of Ak, Upanapishtim and the Upanapishtim and the biblical Noah, 
to the boat, to build a boat to escape from the flood and his elevation to eternal life among the gods. Now the Babylon story, the Babylonian story of the flood in Ak literature, there, are, there appear to have been two versions of the flood, one shorter one in which gods decree, in which the gods decree the flood and then deify the human survivor, Upanapishtim, or Zasudra, Zasuda, or Atrahasis. Atrahasis is found in the tablet of six in the sixth tablet of the Gilgamesh epic and small Ak fragment found at Ugarit. Now the latter tablet is only a record of the Mesopotamian flood tradition found outside of Mesopotamia. The flood account in Gilgamesh was probably not part of the old Babylonian version but was added by the editors of the standard Babylonian or Nineveh recension. A digest of this tradition is found in the writings of 4th century Babylonian priest Barossus, Lambert and Millard, Atrasus. Now, the longer version, which includes the punishment of the rebellious gods, the creation of humans to do their work, several plagues preceding the flood and refounding the civilization after the flood, is preserved only in three tablets of the Atrasis, the Atrahasis epic. The longer version has influenced the biblical account. And once again, this is the Study Bible Bible Study, where we study the Bible with study Bibles and study Bible commentaries. And this is coming from the commentary of Jerome. Jerome's actually a pretty, no matter how you look at it, it's kind of a hard reading, but hopefully there's some words and names you can pick out of there and research and just go to town with and have a lot of fun with. And 2 Peter 1.4, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped corruption that is in the world through lust. And Revelation 17.14 tells us, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them, for he is Lord of lords, he is King of kings. And they who are with them are called and chosen and faithful. God bless and amen. And this is our session number three.